If I told you you can get $2,600 a month in rent for a $40,000 investment in California, would you think I was crazy? Would you think this is a scam? Would you think this is clickbait? I don't know, maybe, but it's not. Let's check it out. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the MLS Search and Analysis Show. I'm James Wise. This is Holton Wise TV. It's not clickbait. Not a scam. It's not BS. You can live in Cali. You could drop 40 G's. I'm going to show you how to get $2,600 in rent. I'm doing so from a man, Horatio. Horatio is an investor in California like I'm sure a lot of you are, right? Horatio has been working with my team to build up a multifamily portfolio. We do so in lower cost markets though, right? We don't focus on real estate in California because it's really expensive. Not to mention like I don't even know if like you're allowed to like own property in California. I feel, I feel like if you own property in California and you put a tenant in it, like it's just their fucking house, right? That's just how that works with the government out there, right? Not like that in the rest of the country. Uh, you know, where people are sane, right? So Horatio has teamed up with us. We handle the property management, maintenance, construction. But of course, before we do any of that, I got to break down the asset for you, Horatio. I got to give you the pros, the cons, let you know exactly the type of risk you're buying into, right? Because $2,600 a month in rent for a $40,000 investment, anybody with math skills understands that sounds fucking great, right? But what does it entail? I'm gonna break all that down for you right after this. You might be wondering why I'm walking around in a bikini. Because this is America, that's why. Land of the free, home of the brave, the land of opportunity. Like the opportunity to click the link below and connect with motivated sellers nationwide. 3308-3310 Woodbridge, all right? Just hit the market three days ago. You got to move quick. You got to move quick on this one, right? Stupid cheap, man. As a matter of fact, we're going to move quick. Number one. Number two, I think we're going to have to go 10 grand over what they're asking. 149.9 is what they are asking for this. I think 160. 160 is what it's going to take to take this down. The reason it's still available is because the seller has got to be just fielding bids, driving up that price, right? Because the rent roll, the market rent, the neighborhood, 150, it's just not competitive, dude. There's no way you're taking this down at 150. What we have, okay, we got a duplex and we got a single family all on the same lot. Now, these photos were taken prior to the tenants being placed in the property, all right? So it's currently fully occupied, and they're getting close to market rent, uh, or they're getting market rent actually on two of the three units. The fourth unit, they are not getting in market rent. So I'm assuming uh, that was the oldest unit. Before I even show you the rent roll, though, why I have the photos up, I want to talk about the basement here, right? Because this is the expensive stuff, okay? This furnace looks to be fairly new, okay? Fairly new furnace, just so everybody's aware. Furnaces! They typically last about 30 years, and they cost about 3000 installed, all right? Next to it, you see a hot water tank. They cost about a grand to install, and they last about 15 years, okay? Now, obviously, you see the building materials, so it's pretty clear that these photos were all taken uh, during their renovation. Another furnace, another hot water tank, same age as they appear to be, okay? All right, it's just some stuff of the attic. Now, the current rent roll. The two duplex units, the two ones, they got them at seven fifty dollars apiece, right? So I'm assuming they fixed it up a little bit from those photos we saw, right? And then the house in the back, that's actually a four one, and they're getting less rent. They're getting six seventy five, dollars right? And that's why it's important to pay attention to the market rents of things, right? Because the market rents, they hit them right on the head with those uh, duplex units, right? Now, as far as the house in the back, that's a 4-1, dude. This is a great Section 8 neighborhood. Normally, we're pulling down like 11 hundo for that, right? So that's $2,600 a month is what you should get over to long haul. Now, you don't get to keep it all, right? You, spend, you get about $2,600 a month that's supposed to come in on an average month, but you got to factor in fixed and variable expense estimates, leaving you with a monthly NOI average 
148533. Now, this is where the 40k comes in, right? You only got to spend 40k to get that 2600 in rent, right? You don't have to spend 160k out of your pocket. That's why real estate kicks ass, right? You put in a quarter, the bank puts in 3 quarters. So you put in 40, bank's going to loan you 120 and them fucking tenants are going to pay off the bank for you. How fucking great is that? This is goddamn America. That's why real estate is sweet, right? Now, even paying 10 G's more, the numbers, they pencil out to a 29.5% cash on cash return or an 11.1 cap. That's why people from all over the U.S. of A. come to markets like Cleveland. You can't get these kind of numbers in California. You can't get these kind of numbers in Chicago. You can't get these kind of numbers in, uh, I don't know, where else is expensive? New York, Denver, right? Can't do it. You can do it here in Cleveland, though. Now, it's not all about the numbers, though, right? We have to talk about the risks, about how things actually play out in the real world, right? Anybody who's anybody looks at 29.5% cash on cash return, they're like, duh, that's fucking sweet. Obviously, it's fucking sweet, right? But it's going to be a little bit of work to get there, okay? Now, we got two units at market rent, right? I gave you a... An estimate of 1100 for market rent for that house, but remember, we're only getting 675 right now, all right? It's not just like you buy it and it magically goes up. No, 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 right? Let me talk to you about the neighborhood. This is a DC-grade neighborhood, okay? DC-grade neighborhood. What that means, it's got a little bit of risk to it, all right? Evictions, people not paying rent, crime, all things you're going to deal with if you invest in a neighborhood like this. There's a fuck ton of low-income, high-risk neighborhoods like this in and around Cleveland. I happen to think this one is the smartest play, though. Why? Because this right here, this is Metro Health, all right? It's a big old hospital, okay? This hospital has committed a billion dollars to their campus and the surrounding neighborhood. This right here is the house right down the street, okay? You're right friggin' there, dude. Take you two seconds to walk your dog to the hospital. You got a little cold, right? So they're going to inject a billion dollars into this neighborhood, right? So if I'm going to invest in a higher-risk neighborhood in a market, I'm picking the one that's got a billion dollars coming into it. On top of that, there's more, right? We are bordering Tremont, Ohio City, downtown, Detroit Shoreway, Edgewater. Those are the neighborhoods in Cleveland that have gentrified. Those are the neighborhoods in Cleveland where you hear about the resurgence of Cleveland. You know, people write articles, Google that, Cleveland resurgence, right? All that fancy stuff they're talking about, these are the neighborhoods that's happening, right? And then you got Lake Erie. So you're right by Lake Erie. You're right by gentrification. And you got a billion-dollar injection coming in. That makes this, in my opinion, a smart long-term play. Now, as far as dealing with the levels of risk that we are currently experiencing in neighborhoods like this, what I like to do is rent out my units to Section 8 tenants. Now, none of the tenants in this building currently are Section 8, right? But Section 8's the way you want to go in the future. So don't focus too much attention on exactly what's happening with your three tenants right now because those three tenants right now are going to be relatively irrelevant over your entire course of ownership. If you're looking at this, over a 30-year loan, which is the financing you're going to want to get on this, man, that's a 360-month ownership term right there. What's currently being done right now, fairly irrelevant in the grand scheme of things. As far as that tenant paying 675 I would slowly increase their rent up, right? I would go slowly because if they move out, you're going to have to do a unit turnover. After you do the unit turnover, you know, fix it up, make it nice, yeah, We'll be able to get a Section 8 tenant in there at 1100 no problem, right? But why spend 10 15 k right now when somebody's already paying rent and it's still cash flows, right? Keep that money coming in as long as you possibly can, right? You're going to get enough turnovers in your career dealing with investments like this, dealing with multifamily investments in, in low-income neighborhoods, right? You're never going to be at a shortage of turnovers during your real estate career uh, ever, it's not going to be something you're like, man, I really wish I could do a turnover renovation this week, right? You're going to be dealing with those quite a bit during your career. Don't be dumb. Don't be greedy. Don't create additional ones because the way it's going to shake out is it's going to be you sending more money to Cleveland than Cleveland sending more money back to you where you live. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.